Hello, my name is John Milburn. I'm your lecturer and unit coordinator in Laws 11057 Introduction to Law. Thank you for joining this unit. Over the next 12 weeks, we'll cover a lot of material. So at the start, we'll try to deal with chapters one, two, and three of your textbook. The textbook, of course, is James Field and Walken Brown, The New Lawyer Foundations of Law. This is the 2019 edition, so we're really jumping the gun, and that's what your textbook looks like. It's an excellent publication. It's not particularly uh, lengthy, so it's achievable to read all of that text in fairly quick time. But having said that, don't rush it. It's a very good text, and I expect that you will go back to some of the material on a number of occasions to allow it all to sink in, as it were. So what's university life like and the practice of law like? Um, we'll try to give you some overview. But first, some words from Justice Stephen Gagler of the High Court, who said in Pearls of Wisdom, 2015, 13 Law Society of New South Wales Journal at 21, the following words that I think ring true. Now, speaking of you as um, law students, his honour said, you may go on to become great advocates for the poor and oppressed in social justice litigation. If that is your ambition, then I do not want to dissuade you. But you should recognise that you will be doing, uh, you will be contributing hugely to social justice simply by being a competent and ethical lawyer and solving your legal problems, your cl um, client's problems. My advice to you, the most inspirational and constructive thing I can say is go forth and build bridges. So from that quote, you get an idea of what it is that you might seek to achieve as a lawyer. Now, having said that, I appreciate that many of you won't actually practice in law. That's just the reality of the situation. However, I do tailor this course for those who wish to practice in law or wish to engage with people or instruct those that do in practice in law. Either way, having a law degree is going to hold you in good stead for employment prospects, irrespective of what field you might ultimately work in. So the new lawyer in chapters one, two, and three, which is the prescribed reading for week one, deals with life as a lawyer, fundamental legal concepts, and legal history. Largely in this session, I'm going to give you an overview and identify some of the things that I think are most important. But first, some preliminary um, remarks. My background is I'm a practicing barrister. I was a solicitor for many years. I've been fortunate to be an academic at the university since I think 2012. I also practice in mediation and I'm a presiding officer in um, tribunals. So you'll um, get to know me over the next 12 weeks and I uh, also unit court, I am also the unit coordinator in a number of other subjects for the university. So as we proceed through the unit, you'll realise that practising in law and even studying law can be quite stressful. You need to adopt an approach that is pragmatic, uh, one where you think ahead as much as you can, and you start to think like a lawyer. So have a look at page 286 of your text, The New Lawyer, Foundations of Law. And there's a wonderful quote, and it goes like this. Thinking like a lawyer means keeping a cool and clear head and speaking and behaving rationally when others around you may be panicking or overreacting. That is a quote that really does ring true. So your task in studying law is to keep it together, don't panic, don't overreact, and just try and work through problems. And you will encounter problems. Um, but the success for you as a student and ultimately a practitioner is how you deal with those stressful situations and be prepared. So in terms of being prepared and knowing what you face, again, looking at the new lawyer, page 346, dealing with management skills, the authors say, learning self-management skills at law school is important if you are to ensure that you maintain good psychological health during and after your legal studies. For example, a study led by Catherine Lay assessed 955 students at the University of Adelaide and found that, wait for this, 58% of law students were psychologically distressed. 
That was the highest level of distress recorded across the discipline study. Medical students were second at 44%. The study shows that there are special issues for law students and emphasises the need for students to take particular care of their psychological health. My goodness, I've really put you off already, haven't I? I've said many of you won't practice as lawyers. I've said that you'll find law study and practice, if you do practice, stressful and you need to take plans. So the idea is that we provide some reality through this unit and we hope that you can focus on how to achieve good results even though life is potentially going to be fairly tough for you as a law student. So what are some of the practical techniques that you need to adopt and practice in order to succeed as a student, as a lawyer? One very important one, and it's very hard for me, I really need to state this and stress it, is the value of using plain language. Now, when I studied in the 1970s and the very early 1980s, life was very different as a law student and as a legal practitioner. So I started practicing as an article clerk in 1982. Now at that stage, the plain English or plain language movement was just starting. So much of the material that I read through law school and then into practice was la language that was a throwback to, if you like, the old days, when lawyers used to use a lot of Latin, long sentences, very involved paragraphs and during the 80s and beyond we started to change and now the emphasis is on using plain language and certainly I think you'll encounter this with most of your lecturers certainly with me that when you produce work I want to see it written in a plain logical and understandable manner so you won't ingratiate yourself from, with me by using long convoluted sentences simplicity is a key and plain use of language both in writing and in your verbal skills is important so communicate simply and effectively from a practical perspective writing in the active voice is important and usually writing in short sentences is a good way to write in a simple manner. As you, if you're the sort of person that likes to type your material, take some time before you present it um, by reading it out, perhaps potentially aloud, and see if it makes sense, see if it rings true, have someone else proofread the material, see if they can follow it, understand it. If in doubt, use short sentences, and always, if in doubt, do write in the active voice. We'll talk more about what we mean by that as we proceed through this unit. A large emphasis on what you do as a lawyer is finding the law. And you will never aspire, you will never achieve a result where you know all the law. Nobody does. But you need to think like a lawyer and you need to find the law and work on a legal problem solving um, skill or skill level to enable you to write um, in a way that lawyers would expect you to write to answer a legal problem. Now that leads me to the assessment and I'll come back to the issue of finding the law in the moment. To do this I'm going to share the screen, look at your Moodle page and on your screen now you should see the Moodle page, what I call the landing page for introduction to law. And um, you can see there, this is the uh, 2018 version. Um, and you'll see on the left-hand side the assessments that are due. So um, your task is to ensure that you are aware of those assessments at an early stage. If you're looking at this lecture in relation to uh, terms beyond 2018, then I expect that you'll see something similar. Although, although take careful note of the dates. We will meet each week uh, using the Zoom platform and I do hope that you're able to meet me for those live sessions. And um, as you work through the um, Moodle page, you'll see that there are 
drop down opportunities in relation to each of the weeks. And we'll work through that more in the tutorial sessions. So become familiar with the Moodle page. Please take note of the assessment dates. Make sure that you maintain a good diary. Block out your diary so that you can ensure that you can complete the assessments on time when required. And um, then you'll find it much less stressful. Now, of course, one of the advantages of having the assessment dates and the assessment tasks known to you at the start is that it helps with planning. You now know what you need to achieve and when you need to achieve, uh, and you can work backwards from that. That's always a good way to deal with stressful situations in law, by planning, working back in the context of planning. But the downside is that now that you know the dates and you know the assessment, it's very unlikely that I'll be receptive to a request for an extension if you say, well, something cropped up in the last week. The obvious response to that will be, yes, but you knew from the start of the unit uh, what the assessment tasks were, uh, at least not for the uh, final um, one, but for the first two, and you knew the dates that they were available or required to be uh, submitted. So keep that in mind. Okay, so finding the law is a big part of what we will teach you in this unit. You'll understand the difference between legislation, which is legislation of parliament, and case law. Case law is that which is developed by the courts, and legislation is the largest source of our law in Australia. It is the most important source of our law in Australia. So it is absolutely essential for students, lawyers and professionals to understand how to find and interpret legislation. So statutory interpretation is a large part of the unit that we'll cover um, in a specific unit, in fact, two units, statutory interpretation and advanced statutory interpretation and drafting, but that will be a flavour throughout all of your studies. Now, case law is central to understanding, interpreting and applying the law. And case law is that which is created by the courts as a result of considering a case. And through the doctrine of precedent, you will learn to look at cases and adopt principles that may be useful in answering a question or arguing a case down the track so that you look at what has been decided in the past as a guide to how a court might consider something in the future. Now, bear in mind, of course, that we work on a hierarchy system. So any law which is stated by the High Court takes priority over, say, the Court of Appeal in the Supreme Court, which takes priority over a Supreme Court decision of a single judge, over, which takes priority over a district court judge, magistrate's court um, decision, etc. So not only is it a matter of identifying the law, but also thinking about where the court sits within the particular hierarchy. We'll learn that some laws are made by state parliaments, other laws, laws are made by the Commonwealth Parliament. And where there is inconsistency, the Commonwealth laws override. Where do we find this information? Through the Constitution. So, as you're studying your material, think about the source of the law, largely for the moment, we'll talk legislation and case law, think about where you might find that law, and we'll go through that in tutorial sessions, and um, please take the opportunity at an early stage to acquaint yourself with the content of what's in the Central Queensland University online library. We have some terrific resources, such as LexisNexis, Westlaw, which is Thomson Reuters and CCH. We supplement that with some excellent online resources that are free, Queensland Legislation, Federal Register of Legislation, and the author, unauthorised but still excellent Ostley. Jade is another great one. And you'll see in about week five, uh, we deal with legal research in detail and I've got a series of videos that might help you in that regard. So how do you go about commencing your studies in week one? Well, the first thing is you'll notice I've given a huge amount of reading. 
I've asked you to read chapters 1, 2 and 3, so that's over 100 pages in week 1. But don't worry, you can move through it fairly quickly and I do expect that you'll come back to this study. You see, the thing about law is that when you're in embarking on a legal problem, you do need to look at a lot of material at the start and then narrow down. It's just part of the technique. So by giving you a lot of reading at the start and asking you to take it in in a broad sense and then come back to it progressively as you go through the unit, that is fairly typical of the way that you need to deal with your research skills um, throughout legal practice. So what are the things that you need to learn and when you're studying law? Well, have a look in your text of the threshold learning outcomes. And what's interesting is that of the six learning outcomes, only one of them deals with knowledge. So you'd think that when you're studying law, everything relates to knowledge, but it doesn't. There are six learning outcomes that you need to consider. And here they are. Number one is knowledge. So it is essential that you learn what the law is in general terms. You, you won't learn much specifics in introduction to law. Number two, this is really important, ethics and professional responsibility. Your ethics as a practitioner, if you choose to practice, but also as a law student, ethics, professional responsibility is extremely important. Number three, and I've already alluded to this, you need to think like a lawyer. We need to develop your thinking skills. Now that might seem odd, but there is a definite mindset uh, that lawyers adopt when dealing with legal issues, dealing with clients, dealing with courts, dealing with practitioners, um, dealing with other professionals, members of the public. So thinking like a lawyer is number three, thinking skills is really important. Number four, I've also alluded to this, research skills, vitally important. We don't necessarily need for you to know all of the law. You won't know all the law, but we do expect that you'll develop techniques to understand how to research effectively and find the law. So that's learning outcome number four. Number five, I've dealt with this as well. Communication and collaboration. Well, not the collaboration bit yet, but communication. So you've got an idea of what it is that we seek for you to achieve in terms of your communication skills. Direct and understandable, where you can simple. Collaboration um, means how you inter interact with your colleagues, primarily in the context of this court. Um, at this stage, bear in mind the difference between collaboration, which is good and encouraged, versus collusion, which is bad. And also very bad is plagiarism. So be aware of that and be aware that all of your online assessment is run through a program called Turnitin, which essentially provides us almost instantaneously with information about other online resources. And if there is a match, I can identify very quickly where that match occurred whether it was from legislation or some um, journals or even other assessments that have been submitted by students online. It will capture all of that. Now, don't be too concerned because there is a way that you can use other material and not fall foul of the plagiarism laws. The way to do it, you reference your material. You identify the source of the material and you reference it appropriately. Referencing is done through the Australian Guide to Legal Citations. Version three will teach you that. So that's learning outcome number five. And number six is really um, something I've alluded to as well, and that is self-management. How do you go about studying and practicing in law? It means being so having a good techniques in self-management and looking after your psychological health, which is really what we opened with this evening. So of those six outcomes, knowledge is number one, and it's very important, but you must consider each of the other five. So be well aware of those learning outcomes 
as you proceed through this unit. Now, law as a profession, um, well, originally it was self-regulation. Over time, lawyers are now regulated externally to a greater degree. But the idea of a profession is that it is self-regulating. Um, lawyers practice in a vast range of different environments. There are many that specialise and there are many that are more general in terms of the way that they practice. And there are a lot of realities that are dealt with in the textbook. Now, I'm just going to identify a few things in chapter one of your text that you might want to pay particular attention to. So firstly, the realities of legal practice, pages seven through 10. Lawyers help people, they give clear advice about complicated problems, they're negotiators and they're advocates, and they read a lot. You will notice all of those things are true if you choose to practice in law. I think a good starting point for you might be to look at activity 1.10. It's on page 10, it's in the think box. And you have an opportunity to consider attributes that you might expect would, be, um, would serve you well as a lawyer. Now, don't be too hung up on the issue of public speaking. I know that many of you have chosen law as a source of study because people have said you're good at debating, you can speak well, and that's very important. But there are many lawyers that don't engage in public speaking. In fact, many solicitors um, don't appear in courts or engage in public speaking per se. So if that is not a strength, don't let that put you off your studies or um, practice. But there are some essentials. So clarity of thought, good communication skills. And this is an interesting one. Even better listening skills is really important. You do need to be well organized and technologically capable. Learning online is going to serve you well in that regard. You do need to be committed. You need to be personal personable, flexible, and you have need to have an analytical mind and some problem solving skills. So if you tick those boxes, they're the most important, I think, then you can look at the full list and identify where your strengths and perhaps weaknesses might lie. If you do choose to practice in law, there is the basic dichotomy in Queensland of solicitors and barristers. And um, I think the ratio is about 10 to 1, 10 solicitors for every barrister. Um, in other states, there is a merged profession where lawyers can practice either as a solicitor or barrister or both, more particularly. Um, and of course, lawyers might practice in private practice or government, academic, corporate or community sectors. So there's a whole range of places where you might practice your skills. Have a look at the Priestly 11. Um, these are the practice areas which match reality mostly. They're on page 26. And there are 11 priestly units or courses, administrative law, civil procedure, company law, constitutional law, contract law, criminal law, equity, which includes trusts, evidence, professional conduct, property law, and torts law. So there are a range of different units. Now, you need to take care with this, that when you're studying contract law, you might fall into the trap of only looking at a particular problem from a contract law perspective. But bear in mind that whilst we might have separate units for separate areas of topics uh, of study, you can't really isolate one without considering the other. Um, there may be the main emphasis on contract law, but as you're studying contract law or you're providing an answer to a contract law problem, there may actually be some issues to do with equity or trusts or something else that comes into play. So being a little creative and being a little broader in your approach to answering a particular problem will always stand you in good stead. You might think about how you can supplement your legal studies by look in, invoking some reality. So take a, a trip down to the courts. If, you, if you've never been to a court, sit in the public gallery, see how it works in practice. Maybe go to a community legal centre, 
try to link with the community legal center volunteer if you've got the time if the lawyers that are providing legal advice are willing to do so and i always used to do this um you know they may have um they may allow students to come in and sit on the interviews with the consent of the clients so try to broaden your approach and we'll give you some ideas in that regard now i mentioned early on that your legal career your professional entity begins early and your academic integrity will stay with you so please consider the excellent summary in relation to plagiarism cheating and collusion which um, are on pages 39 to 40 of your text but more generally think about your legal career your, your professional identity by looking at pages 36 to 40 of your text now beyond that consider fundamental legal concepts chapter 2 pages 43 to 86 think about the way in which laws are made through parliament or courts so we call the decision made by courts the common law and you'll see that referred to often as opposed to statute law which is the law made by parliament and from a primarily historical perspective the australian legal positions relationship with the uk think about um, legislation such as the australia act 1986. now bear in mind of course that um, we have the law relating to indigenous australians and look at pages 87 through 115 of your text and in particular have a look at um, the commentary about the Mabo decision pages 92 to 93 and think about the native title act passed the next year uh, and then supplemented by the Wick people against the state of queensland we'll talk more about that during tutorial sessions all right so this has been a brief introduction to introduction to law and your legal studies i do hope that um, you join us for the live sessions each week and i look forward to engaging with you during those live sessions and also through the exchange of material in moodle all the best and we'll speak to you soon